uh, the orientation. It kept being locked to uh, vertical instead of landscape. So let's see. I'm going to pull it up on the uh, TV here, chat, so I can see what you guys are saying. And okay, now it's on there. Cool. You can see the back of me. Fun. All right. Um, doesn't look like there's. Oh, there we go. Okay. Expand the chat. Let's see. Can I see it right there? Yeah, I should be able to see that pop out chat. Okay. And then I'm just going to expand this. And cool. Okay. Let me know if you can hear me, guys. I'm back. So I'm just going to go ahead and top off these cores here. Much better. Okay, cool. Thank you. Let's see. Once it gets to the last part, it's always kind of hard to pull off. I also need to get a new uh, bottom anvil. Uh, it's starting to cut into it quite a bit. I've been meaning to machine one, but I just haven't uh, got to it. They charge like a hundred bucks for it, and it, it gets worn so quick. So we have, out of all today, 300 jobs. We're down to about 120 jobs left for the night. Uh, I gotta go ahead and get those out, uh, or at least uh, un get them off the press. Oh wait, no, I already pulled it off the press. I gotta get them off the finisher. That way, in the morning, they can be picked up first thing. So we had a big day today, and that's why I'm staying late. Just a lot of stuff over the weekend. Mondays are always like that, though, as you guys can imagine. Uh, let's see. It's alive. Yes. Yes, indeed. Let me know if the audio is coming through. This is that uh, one mic that doesn't work too well. I keep saying, oh, yeah, I got to get a new mic, but then I never do. Okay. And I got to change this guy pretty shortly. Okay. All right. So did you guys have a good work day today or did you get to have this whole week off or something? I know some companies are like crazy with uh, the Easter, East, Easter, with the Easter uh, week. Get the whole week off or work every day, one of the two. Okay, oh. let's see. Sheesh, that's a big roll. I, actually, it's uh, for, for this uh, machine, this is probably about uh, middle of the road. Usually this guy gets filled up about two times as much as uh, one large roll. So for a full 5,000 foot roll, this is about 2,500 feet, depending on the media. Right now, um, I was running a lighter stock, so it might be a little bit less than that, but it just depends on the thickness too. You know, like how thick is the material you're running will determine how much like spacing or maybe the uh, liner is uh, more of a, I guess like a loose, like a, like a poly liner, that stuff creates a lot of space. It doesn't pull very tight because it's so thin and plastic. You would think it would be less of a, less size of a roll, but because it doesn't compress or lay as flat as like the, uh, um, I guess lay flat liner or a bleached liner or, you know, craft, craft style liner, it, uh, it's way, way different. Those typically lay a lot flatter. But the uh, poly liners, man, those things take up a lot of space. Plus, they curl up so easy. They look really cool, though, like when you're finishing them because they're clear. Uh, so it gives, like, a pretty cool look when you're finishing. But it's it's actually kind of more of a mess 
to use. I only use it if I absolutely have to for like high speed applications. So a lot of almost, I would say almost 90% of the clients that I print for, uh, you know, are resellers. Uh, but generally speaking, it's all hand placed labels and it's not high speed. I do have some that require the high speed, uh, but most of the time hand placed or a good high quality liner is fine. Okay, we made the decision a while ago to just stick with like uh, good quality manufacturers of material because oftentimes what will happen is you'll have issues with the finishing side or the printing side and it just takes more time and you can blow through the material so fast. So it's why, you know, why even waste the time using crappy material and, uh, and products that are going to take you more in time. Time is the most important for us, you know, that's... We can't do anything to get time done longer. You know, like we can't add hours to the day, but we can get better products to work faster. We can get better equipment to make the job go faster. So that's why we kind of just stick to USA manufactured material and um, specific quality. Um, what happens most of the time that we have uh, the material in stock is because a client needed it for a specific application say a certain type of plastic doesn't stick well with uh, certain types of uh, uh, adhesives. Well, we grab that special type of adhesive that will stick to that plastic. Then we have that in stock and we just order a bunch of it and start converting that as a inventory stock. As long as it's not crazy expensive for like hand placed, you know, uh, that way we can have the material readily in stock. We hold about, I don't know, I think seven, different types of material on hand that covers a wide, wide range of uh, products as far as data labels, warehouse, sticking to plastic, metal. Um, and we have one really, really good one that's actually being ran right now for these labels. Um, it pretty much sticks to everything. Like I don't know anything it doesn't stick to well. Uh, so it costs a little bit more, but we don't have to all these jobs are small quantity, right? You're seeing me change this role quite a bit. We don't have to like search for and load up the new material specific for this type of one application. We just use the slightly higher cost material and it stays on the press majority of the time. Basically is what I'm trying to get to. But when we start running jobs in the, you know, uh, 780 MSI square range, uh, MSI range, then we'll start swapping roles for more specific tasks, uh, either more beneficial on cost for one type of product or uh, a more expensive uh, type of uh, face stock to hold, you know, harsh conditions. Um, you know, one, one of those are usually the big reasons why we swap roles other than someone wants paper or someone wants pop. But you see a lot of these are small rolls of like 120 pieces. Let's see. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Okay. Hopefully you guys had a good day today. Let's see. Can your car cutter cut uh, rolls of vinyl? No, I've been asked that so many times and I wish I could uh, for my own personal. Uh, no, it cannot cut. Um, the blade is about a half inch too small from what a uh, actual roll would be. With that said, I'm not sure it'd be able to uh, take the, the abuse through like all the adhesive and stuff like that. And the PVC because that's that's pretty thick. It's about a half inch too short, but it cuts cores like crazy. I know I've cut uh, one eighth core, quarter inch core, and three eighths core uh, wall thickness, and no problem. I know they're 
I don't know if it comes with like the motor upgrade or if they just make that standard now, but they were talking about it. I was like, I'll just take the basic one. It's like, all right, well, for the same price, we'll go ahead and get you the upgraded motor. I believe it's because they just made it standard now. So I'm glad because I was able to cut uh, some really tough cores with it. I'll go and check the comments in a section, uh, second. Here we go. Woo, it's at the end of the day. Okay, what was that? Uh, when did you get the core cutter? Uh, about a year ago. Um, somewhere around there. It's just been tucked in the back there. But we use it every day. So I remember using the miter saw for the uh, other cores, which was fine because we were only using a couple of cores a day, you know, maybe like, I don't know, 20 cores or so a day. Um, and then um, once we got this machine over here up and running, I mean, we can cut up to 300. I think the max cores that we've ever cut is like 390. That's our, that's our max in one day. So it could definitely handle, you know, core cutting without getting, uh, you know, any issues of dust or, or burrs and things like that. It's definitely worth it. If I would have done that with the miter saw, we would have been toast. <laughs> I'd be buried in dust and, uh, like it just would not be good. But it just makes it so much easier. Plus, when we used to cut it with the miter saw, we used to file it with like a nail file on the inside because it'd just be so, so rough, even with the fine tooth blade. But I mean, if you're going to do it, you want the uh, fine tooth blade. Uh, absolutely. It's a necessity. And so I could run all of these and then back rewind them and stuff. But this honestly is the fastest way. And I'm uh, actually sealing the label over itself so that way sarah doesn't have to do it in the morning because uh like i said we're gonna have quite a bit of uh jobs at least uh at least 120 for sure and it takes a long time if it's not prepped already whereas i'm just right here and i can go ahead and do it typically what i will do is i will run it and then i will go ahead and seal it as i'm watching it run but because I'm reading the comments, I don't want to skip it. <laughs> if I look away while the machine's running, uh, I could miss one of the jobs and it could wind over itself because it's so fast. Uh, it just, you know, happens in a second. Um, I could also run the machine a little bit slower, but uh, I don't want to do that. Okay, I do need to change that okay, up here. Let's see. So right now this is running at 30 meters a minute. And this is like the medium kind of cruising speed that we'll run at. It really depends on the substrate and how intricate the labels are, but typically we're running at 30 meters a minute. I don't push, if it says it can go to 60 meters a minute, for this it can. I don't push it to 60 meters a minute because you're putting excessive use on the bearings for this type of machine. I know there's tons of other machines that uh, can absolutely obliterate the speed, uh, but this will go 80 meters a minute. I believe with uh, the, ma the max speed with a semi-rotary plate. I just, uh, if I don't need that speed really, I'm not going to use it. There have been times where I've done it, you know, like it just runs 100% for a couple of hours. Uh, but that's usually like on blank labels, which is another cool thing. You can go up to, I, I think you can go up to 300 meters a minute if you use a solid rotary die. So if you did have like crazy labels to do, it could definitely catch up with some of the faster uh, finishers. But those those uh, dies are so expensive. They like start at 800 bucks for one die. That's one shape. So you got to have the workload for it. All right, let's see. Um, where did you get the core cutter? Uh, double E. 
Um, I'm surprised how uh, rare a roll color cutter is here in the USA. Yeah, tell me about it. The, they're common in the EU. Yes, absolutely. Who did you pur purchase it from? Double E. That is so funny that you said that because, oh my God, for the heart, for the longest time, I had the hardest, uh, uh, like, I had the hardest time searching for them. And for the longest time, I could not find anybody in the States who had inventory. Actually, even when I bought that, they didn't have inventory. It took them two months to make that. Uh, they were so backlogged with work. The first company I went to order from, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Waited a month for it. And then that month into it, they're like, yeah, we need to increase our prices. And what you're, uh, what you're paying us is not going to be good anymore. And uh, that was like right on the pandemic. And I was just like, what, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> I already uh, agreed to a pricing with you. And they gave me some crazy, stupid price. Um, you know, you're talking like 20 grand for a little handle that rotates and cuts wood. Um, or cardboard. And so I had to find another company and wait another two months. And uh, their prices even went up from what it was before because that wasn't the original uh, cutter I was looking at. But nonetheless, it's a good cutter. It does what it needs to do. I think at the time, like I way, way overpaid. But at the time, it was... Uh, what I needed, like I absolutely needed it. And unfortunately, if you need something and nobody has it, the cost is going up. Same thing happened with the label rewinder. I'm not gonna say the company, because I believe they had a hardship and almost went under or did go under, but I waited over six months for my label rewinder and it was a freaking nightmare. Never ended up getting it. Hey, what's up? see so yeah check them out uh, good company they came in the clutch for me uh, it was actually able to produce it when I couldn't get it from anybody else and uh, Grimco just saying uh, if Grimco has a core cutter cool um, if you're talking about purchasing pre-done cores and eh, not gonna work um, I do too many different sizes and shapes and um, well, I guess it's just the uh, lengths, but too many different shapes that have different lengths. So I can't have all those in stock. That'd be crazy. I order the cores by a pallet of 500 cores, um, 72 inches long. So they come on a pallet 500 at a time, 72 inches long. And, oh, no, I'm sorry, three, 300 at a time. Um, the first time I got it, I was like, holy crap, that's a lot of cores. And then I realized that eh, it doesn't really last that long. It goes pretty quick, especially when you're doing like smaller runs like I do. Um, you know, it just, uh, they go fast. Usually companies will only do small runs or will only do large runs. You know, we kind of have both. So uh, the long runs, the press will be running for a little bit of time on one job and then we'll just cut you know a couple of cores and I'll be it. and then the short runs the press is still running the same amount of time but the amount of changes that the finisher requires it um, uses tons and tons of cores let's see there we go please don't break yay Whew, I'm so tired feel like I've been working nonstop today. It's good. Definitely good. Just really tired. Probably hear it in my voice. Or maybe I'm just saying stuff that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Which is probably more, most likely. Uh, let's see. Where did you get these lamination rolls on the table? Oh, uh, those rolls of lamination. Uh, so we buy them from uh, the manufacturers uh, directly. Um, that's the only way we could, uh, get the labels to, uh, to be a re a resale cost. Uh, let's see. Hello from, uh, Guam. Is this a uh, print and cut machine? Uh, can it cut any shape? It can cut any shape as long as you have the die to cut the shape. Basically uses a steel die to cut the shape of the label. 
Um, are you still running your DLF T20 finisher for custom shapes or did you ditch the machine due to speed? So we, we actually sold that a long time ago and uh, it was to um, now a friend of mine, uh, DIY beverages. So literally the day I posted that or maybe a couple days after, um, he came over and he purchased the machine, said uh, he was making beverages and stuff like that. And so he runs it and he does a killer job. I'm not sure if he has that now or faster equipment, but uh, if you guys want custom drinks, uh, I have a video where I accidentally sliced a can and went everywhere. His energy drinks are awesome. Uh, but he has all different types of drinks. He can be sparkling or flavored sports drinks, stuff like that. Anyways, he uses it for his business from... When he purchased, as of now, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, it's a good finisher, and I'd say really, really cool. It's just, yeah, no way no way I could use that for the quantity of labels I'm doing now. Right now, I'm just checking registration, making sure it's all good. Everything is aligned. Man, that was quite a while ago, too. I think that was a year and a half ago. Let's see. Oh, and then, yeah, the custom shapes. No, we uh, use dies even for the custom shapes. So typically a customer will say, hey, I have this design I need. And they let me know how many they want. And uh, I charge them for the die. Um, usually dies are around 250 somewhere around there for a good quality die. And then, um, you know, I maintain them and keep them. If they were to ever go bad, you know, I just keep them up to date. So if something chips on it, I'll buy a new one at my cost. But that's usually how that works. Right now, I mean, it the prices for labels for us for resale are so inexpensive on the market. Uh, just because we're, this is primarily what we only do is resale and it's all prime labels. So we don't do embellishments or finishes. We kind of took it uh, at the same angle we did for the, um, uh, what is it, for the stickers. So we do one thing and we do one thing really well, which allows us to be extremely affordable. And, you know, I think, I think we're doing really, really good. We are very busy and happy to be busy, which is why I'm here working right now uh but we're getting a lot of positive feedback so we're super blessed for that um, but you know the only reason we do that is because we're not so spread out we focus on prime labels don't do any embellishments we have uh the capability to do it but we just don't really use it so we have paper gloss lamb matte lamb gloss uv matte uv uh and then we have bop we have silver you know that we can print over we just can't print white uh, and then that's it. Now we do have specialties as far as like adhesives for specific types of projects. Uh, and we, we do material traceability. Uh, we give out data sheets, uh, you know, for chemical compounds, things like that. So we follow some pretty strict guidelines, but we only technically do a small, uh, amount of very, like we're not doing a spot UV, we're not doing foil. We were going to do casting here at one point, but decided it's just a little too much to chew off right in the beginning. So we uh, kind of regrouped and like, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it fast and effective? And most importantly, how are we going to do it affordably? So that's kind of been our angle, just like the stickers. Only with a massive, massive payment. Let me see here. Um, if anybody needs a digital label finisher, contact me. I have one I want to sell. Uh, the Bass says, uh, Jordan, uh, you were the reason I got my DTF from uh, from your videos. Then I broke five blades doing glossy paper on laminated full bleed in less than a day. Now I'm only offering pop. Really, how did you uh, break the paper? Was a, it could just be the type of paper. I think for that, I can't recall like ever really breaking a breaking a blade on it. 
you want to make sure that that depth of the blade for labels it's a little bit different you want to make sure that the pressure is not the driver of how deep the blade goes you want to make sure that that cap the blue cap is the uh what you know decides how deep the blade goes the pressure is kind of just there to put enough pressure for the blade to get to a depth but the depth is dictated by the blue cap or how far the blade's actually sticking out and that's because you're always cutting on the same um same cutting strip you're never changing any parameters really at least that's how we did it and we never had to worry about a blade i think we replaced maybe three blades maybe two blades that whole time and it was all the 45 uh degree blade now for stickers we uh use our own custom ground blades which you can buy at aztecalabels.com <laughs> but uh yeah uh, we use those custom ground. I think we have like 2,000 of them in stock now. And those sell pretty uh, pretty well. A lot of people like them. Um, I, have, I have yet to hear anything bad about them. Other than like, oh, you know, one blade was bad in like a, a three pack or three boxes that they got. Something like that. Yeah, the blades do come bad every now and then. But it's far and few between. And plus, they're so, so inexpensive compared to, you know, uh, uh, one blade. So you'll get, for 45 bucks shipped, you'll get five blades that are custom ground to a higher angle. But if one breaks, no big deal. You still have four more and you can swap them out. We were buying one blade at 45 or $55, whatever it was, and going through them like crazy. And they didn't cut as well, which is really kind of what sought us out to make our own type of blade. They're all really similar, but the angles on the back are really what make a, a difference in cutting. So I have a machinist background. Uh, I used to grind my own cutting tools for single point uh, turning and stuff. So that's kind of what drove me to do that. It's like, ah, oh, I can make a better cutting blade. And sure enough, I did. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I'm sorry you had a bunch of trouble with the DLF. Um, let's see. Do you have any groups to ask questions? Yeah, you can go to the Discord, Print Shop Talk. I believe I just made it unlocked. So I, there's like two or 300 people in there. I didn't know it was locked this whole time and it was by invitation only. Uh, but yeah, there's a bunch of us in there. Uh, do you ship labels to Canada? So currently we don't. With the new launch of our webpage in about a week, we will ship to Canada. Uh, we just have to kind of figure out how to do it more efficiently than we did last time because we got taken in shipping costs. Uh, not only that, but uh, when you ship out of the country, shipping and tracking get a little wonky. Uh, do you think we can ship uh, that Roland printer plotter to Canada? Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, sorry about that, man. No, um, we're, we're not going to ship this out. I think it, there's too much risk for damage, and we decided, you know, we're just going to keep this and get uh, some other cutters in another room there, or printers. Um, where is it? Uh, let's see. Oh, on Discord. Uh, print Shop Talk. Uh, are you selling your Roland? Uh, what do you plan to get? No, we're not selling it anymore. Uh, it says that invitation expired. If you just go to Discord and then search uh, Print Shop Talk, I believe all one word, try separately. It might be there. Um, Okay, I'll see if I can go ahead and make a new link for it at the end of the video here. Yeah, I, you know, honestly, Mike runs it. Mike, the print man, he runs the whole Discord for me. He actually took time to figure it out. So huge shout out to Mike, the print man. He has his own YouTube channel. Uh, but I was like, dude, like, I am so not technically inclined when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, and he's like, no, nah, man, I got it. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Uh, so he found out how to create a whole bunch of different chat groups uh, and rooms and uh, different. I mean, we have DTF. We have uh, wide format. We have laser engraving. There's there's a whole bunch of stuff in there uh, and some other uh, bigger YouTubes. Um, we have someone in there that owns, you know, some uh, like a vast array of equipment. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it a lot.
Okay. Oh man, we passed the 12 hour mark. I'm getting a little tired here. Actually, more than that. But six. Six o'clock? Seven, yeah. 13 hour, going 14. Woo, long day. Put down in the comments if you guys are still at your shop. Or you're still working, or if you're at home working. Curious to see how many of you guys have a little side hustle, which is what we had. I mean, for the longest time, we worked in our garage forever, and that was honestly that was some of the best times. Don't have to worry about the uh, overhead or anything as far as the building. Sarah and I, so many times, are like, "Oh man, if only we could just go back to the garage. How sweet it would be to just wake up, take two steps, and go right into work, and then you know you could pretty much be at work all day long." You know, you could sleep, let something run like we did many times and then just wake up at like 12 o'clock real quick to go load a new vinyl roll on and then you get that extra production time. The only bad thing is that you literally are working every time. Let's see. Awesome. Thank you for taking the time to answer my questions. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's see. How many people are uh, watching? Hey, cool. 21 people. Wow, oh, nice. I know it's kind of the end of the day, or people are probably just getting off. So I figured it'd be a good time to uh, do the live. Because if you caught the live this morning, oh, it was horrible. I was having an issue with the machine. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to be recording now because I really got to pay attention to figure this out. Let's see. I've been uh, binging your videos all day because I used to have a small print shop. Nice. Uh, which machines would you recommend to buy in 2023 to start a uh, basement business? So definitely basement business is uh, the easiest by far route versus getting up and getting to work. Um, and it's cool because you can be at home after work. I would say, oh, man, if I had to do it again, Labels are definitely profitable, but so are stickers. Stickers actually have a higher profit margin. Um, but uh, it's just so expensive. To do at home, realistically, I would probably say a Roland um, VG2 or VG3 now, whichever one. If you're going to buy new, you might as well get the latest that they have. Um, and then they also have UV printers, so I'd probably take a look at those. As far as labels, the route that we took uh, for labels, it's best to do local. But if you try Etsy, Etsy is just completely flooded now. Like, I wouldn't even recommend stickers or labels to uh, people to try and do on Etsy. It's just, it's, I would never say never, you know, because that's what someone told me, never. Uh, which is why it just made me do it, you know, more. But um, stickers and labels, seeing what we used to do and how little people were there compared to now, um, it's nuts. So local sales is what you're going to gear for, and I'd probably say stickers. Stickers are just blowing up like crazy. It's super easy to make, super profitable. Um, I mean, you can do eight, nine, ten times the cost of vinyl. Um, if you go the reseller route, that's that's way way more aggressive but uh that's probably what i would recommend if i had to do it over again to start up i would do that i would get a vg2 used if i knew what i was doing to service or a new vg3 and then i would get a really good source for material i'd get a laminator and that's basically those three things in a graph tech fc uh, 9000 and I just run the crap out of that. And you could easily pay. If you didn't have building, presses, and all that stuff, and all you had to do was pay for that guy, your home, of uh, say like $3,000 a month for mortgage and a uh, laminator and a graph deck, you could do that easily with those three things. Like so easy. <laughs> but um, it's a lot of just consistent calling and knocking on doors and everything like that. I think that's the biggest thing that people get hung up on uh, is like you get emails all the time, man. Hey, I'm doing exactly uh, what you're doing. Can you help me out with this or that? I'm not getting sales. It really is calling and knocking on doors. I believe our biggest sale 
that really got us fired off was like going to a smoke shop and the guy ordered like $700 worth of stickers and it took us a day to print. And we were like, yes, we can make money, you know? And that was with the BN20. That was with the little BN20 that we had. So your margins are gonna be, I mean, uh, your cost is gonna be a lot more because that thing is a lot slower um, if you go with the BN20. But if you're able to kind of squeeze it out and go with the Roland, um, you could do so much more. And the graph tech, you want to make sure you get a separate cutter. But I mean, we used to just contour cut and then slice with the ruler into squares. Um, and why not? Okay, let's see here. 12.41 p.m. Tuesday here in Guam. Oh, wow, nice. Lunch. Um, I just got in as well. What's up? Why not latex? So latex, uh, I think I've done a couple of videos on that. Just to kind of recap. Latex is great if I was doing banners and stuff like that, or wall mur murals, or like, uh, uh, what is the other thing? Uh, something else I was thinking. Um, it's like with the wooden frames. What are those? Can canvas prints? I would do latex, but the droplet size right now with latex is like 12 picoliters. And um, what happens with the uh, 12 picoliters, even though it says it can print 12 by 12 DPI, a 1200 by 1200 dpi the droplets are so big so imagine this table right here if you can see this table you have the roland which the uh, droplets are the size of this little box and you have the latex which the ink droplets are the size of this box it's actually probably pretty accurate <laughs> this table is 1200 by 1200 dpi right or uh, a space of 1200 by 1200 can i fit more of the four picoliter size droplets from the Roland or more of the uh, 12 picoliter size from the latex. Clearly the Roland can put more. So you're actually getting more detail in the same amount of space. Therefore the 1200, the hell, I mean the 900 by 900 from the Roland is like two to three times better than the 1200 by 1200 for the uh, latex. So for large things, you will not notice it a foot away or a couple feet away, you know, full arm's lengths, you won't be able to see the coalescence or the grains or the droplets uh, from the latex. But because stickers are an up close item, um, you could definitely tell. Everybody looks at stickers from like here to right about the arm's length. And that is the reason why we switch from the latex to the Roland. Um, now, I know plenty of people who are printing still with the latex and that's how they built you know, they're, or that's how they kind of followed us and got it, or maybe they just knew about the latex and got it. Um, I mean, you could still sell stickers like we did, you know, with them. You don't need to have a Roland or a higher um, resolution printer or anything like that. Uh, but that's just kind of the route we took. And I just say that because there's a lot, not a lot, but there's a few people on here that I've seen that uh, get upset because they're buying the same equipment that I have. And then when I change to something newer that I can afford or that I find is a better solution, they kind of get upset. I'm always changing. I'm always changing equipment to get the best of the best that I can at that time. And uh, if something new comes out and I think that that's better, I will switch. I have no like grand loyalty uh, if there is something better. I've stuck with roll. I mean, uh, not Roland, uh, Graph Tech from the beginning because they just are hands down the best in the industry for what I do. Uh, you know, I've seen plenty of machines in person. I've got to try a bunch of different machines in person. And honestly, the Graph Techs are what I tell people. I've had zero issues with the exception of one uh, just recently or more towards the beginning of the year because of something I did. I shocked the board and it reset, but they covered it. Um, as far as printers, uh, that guy is, oh, when it prints and it's running, the quality is, oh, so perfect. But man, there is a lot of internals that you have to replace and fix, and it can be kind of crazy. This guy, though, this is, oh, the best, this right here is the best piece of equipment I've ever had. Hands down, the best. So you could uh, do blank labels, you can do die cut labels. It's just flawless, it runs nonstop. But yeah, that's, uh, those are my
couple of things I would get. The printer, wide format, whether it's a Roland, latex, and then um, a Graftec cutter. And honestly, you don't even need the laminator to start out. You can get the laminator after you've seen what, you know, lamination does versus doesn't. We always laminate because it adds a better quality product. And a lot of people put stickers on like, you know, their phone cases. Where do phones go in and out of pockets, which is like high abrasion, you know, and uh, it'll fade the stickers or start tearing them up. So we put lamination. Um, <laughs> plus, when we started seeing people put our stickers on Ferraris and Lamborghinis, we're like, oh, God, <laughs> we probably want to put lamination on it. So it doesn't look so bad. Uh, and then we started using higher quality materials. And basically, we're printing on stuff that is uh, car wraps. Uh, you know, same type of material as car wrap. Um, man, the new HP Latex keeps having issues, though. Oh, yeah, I've heard, but I've never witnessed personally. So I kind of don't really be like, oh, yeah, I've heard, you know, it's had so many issues. Because um, yeah, I just don't know in person. Uh, why did you move away from your garage uh, space? How much is that GM machine? <laughs> Seems money. Yes, it is. <laughs> the GM machine is... Uh, one of our most expensive purchases ever. Um, I know the 350. Well, they're late. They're late. Let me just say the laser version is something that I really wanted to take a look at. And I know that's, I'm just going to give a broad ballpark somewhere between 400 and 600. So you'll have to go get a quote yourself, uh, but just a very broad ballpark. So I'm not, you know, you know, saying something that isn't true or anything like that but it's somewhere in that range and uh hopefully i don't get in trouble from anybody saying hey you're giving out these prices okay that is something i want to get next i think that or a uh, different printer you know honestly honestly i think i want to get a different printer i want to get a uv printer I just don't know what UV printer to get. Uh, Domino is awesome. I haven't gotten a quote from Domino, but I do know somebody. And from what I understand, it's a lot. Uh, HP Indigos look cool and they got a lot of capability. However, it's so expensive to operate them looking at, you know, what it requires. And I just don't see myself ever, you know, wanting to pay that to get that type of a, a print. Yeah, print's amazing, but you know, in the million, million dollar route, I'm not, it's too expensive to operate. Even if the machine, you know, has a base price, the operation is more what I'm worried about. Quality of the image, one, obviously, but then the operational cost. Like I do all my own maintenance on that machine. Sometimes I do have to call people in to help, but uh, you know, you want to make sure there's service around you who can help you. But the dominoes are good. They look really cool. Screen, screen 350s, those are awesome. The Canon Colorado, I think those are around 100,000. Um, oh, 45,000. Okay. The one I was looking at, I don't know. I just scrolled through like their webpage or whatnot. Oh, I thought it changed. Uh, and it said something like a hundred thousand. I haven't gotten an official quote yet, but I was thinking about putting one of those in here. The only problem is I saw gloss in matte, right? I'm like, Oh, that would be awesome to just throw gloss and then have it throw on matte. And I don't have to worry about changing rolls. It's only going to affect the area that has the ink. So any, if it's not like a full coverage, uh, type of, um, project, then uh, you're not going to have a full glossy sticker or a full matte sticker. And that would be the drawback for me is that, you know, there's no point. I just laminate. So I just get like a bunch of these guys and it will print the same speed and we'll be good. Plus I could have different substrates on them at the same time. But yeah, the Colorados are kick ass. Especially if you're doing like banners and stuff. I just don't know what the uh, resolution is. Let me know if you've seen what the resolution is. All right. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead, check it out. We have all of our past lives. You can go back and watch. Uh, every time I do a live, it goes uh, up for um, members only. 
and you help support the channel. It's a cool way to kind of help us out doing the YouTube route. Let's see, uh, Graphtech Blades. So we have our Graphtech Blades for sale at aztechlabels.com. You can go ahead and check that out. This is my sales plug, by the way. Uh, and then uh, A-Z-T-E-C-L-A-B-E-L-S.com. And then if you want to do uh, labels or resell labels, our rates are extremely low. So that way you can still have profit. Uh, a lot of companies double what we do, 50%. just depends on what your market is. Uh, but yeah, check us out, aztechlabels.com as well. And then uh, we can go ahead and get you guys reseller. You just need to be an actual company that resells in order to uh, qualify for the sale. Uh, sales cert, and then um, a little bit more information about your business, and we can go ahead and start uh, selling to you. But uh, there's a lot of people uh, that we you know resell to on a daily basis, and we can go ahead and get you some references. But uh, yeah, anyways, like, subscribe, comment down below, and... Uh, I think that's it for tonight. I'm pretty, I'm dead. <laughs> to be honest, like I am dead. Uh, I'm so tired. Let's see. Get a quote for the AL230. Do you take the monthly service plan as they suggest? If you're not technically inclined or you don't know how to do any service already. Um, yeah. Um, I can't remember what ours was, but I want to say somewhere around like three grand a month just for uh, service. And then you got to pay per click on top of that. Uh, so. I, I chose not to do it mainly because I'm a resale platform. I sell to all these other people who sell labels and there's no way that I could take that kind of chunk out and give it off to them when I can service it myself faster. I just hadn't had a good uh, relationship with the uh, printer companies uh, for the Konica Minolta style, you know, printers. And so I figured, you know, I'll try this one on my own. It's a big ass purchase to be messing around with yourself. But so far, I've been able to keep it up, uh, you know, and operational for quite a while. Uh, well, thank you so much. I've been following you for the past three years. Oh, rock on, man. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, yeah, like, subscribe, comment down below. You do not need to have a purchase uh, membership here or anything like that. I get people asking me that every now and then. No, there's still videos. Uh, but uh, yeah. All right, catch you later.